Hey warriors. Okay, so I wanted to pop on here today for our monthly highlight, which is all about mobile friendly websites. So this is the question that, you know, we always like to audit our support team. We like to just look at the Facebook group and just kind of figure out, okay, like why do people have questions? Where are you wondering, like, how do I even do that? So mobile optimization, making mobile friendly sites is one of your top support requests and things that you just want to know more about. So I am going to jump in and first of all, talk about why mobile optimization is important and also um, things that you should actually worry about and things that you maybe shouldn't and just little tricks that, you know, maybe you haven't tried. I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible because I know in general, a lot of us just want to get to doing our lives and we don't want to like spend, you know, all day learning about this stuff. So Let's get to it. Um, one thing I want to mention before I jump into my slides is that mobile optimization and being mobile friendly are different things. So your site at Weeknight website is already technically mobile friendly, meaning that once uh, you, you make anything, you know, if you're using a laptop or even iPad or something like that to build your website, once you do that, you should be able to go onto your website website and have it still load. So it, you're, you're not going to see things really hanging a ton off the page or, um, or have things that you can't preview at all on your phone. It just not, might not be mobile optimized. Mobile optimized means that you've specifically paid attention um, and created experiences for mobile devices. So that is going to be the difference. Okay, now I have some slides that I wanted to share with you. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about, talk about, well, talk about is, um, why mobile optimization is even important. Well, that is because the majority of mobile, tr uh, of website traffic is mobile. So mobile accounts for approximately half of web traffic worldwide. In the first quarter of 2021, which is the year that I'm recording this right now, excluding tablets, mobile generated 54.8% of global website traffic, consistently hovering around the 50% mark since the beginning of 2017. So it hasn't gone a ton up or a ton down. It's really stayed around 50%, but it surpasses desktop. Okay. Um, so what not to worry about though, when it comes to being perfect for a mobile experience is going to be tablets. So most people are actually not viewing websites on tablets. Your tablet view can be very similar to your desktop view if you want it to. Um, and then also know that, you know, only let's see, 3.1% of website visitors came from tablets um, in 2020. So again, like if that experience isn't tip top perfect, don't worry about it. But remember that most website traffic is coming from mobile devices. So do worry about that. And then obviously a lot of people are looking on desktop. One thing that we didn't really talk about here um, is, you know, if you have a product that is being purchased. Um, so let's say you have, you know, a, a course or a coaching program or something like that. I want to mention the fact that most people are going to make purchases on a desktop device. If you have some sort of, um, if you have some sort of course or like digital products. So a lot of times what will happen is people will be introduced to your product on their phone. So like a Facebook ad, something like that. But if it's a high ticket product, I really should say that if it's high ticket. So if your product is more than a hundred dollars, a lot of people are going to actually go to their computers to buy it. So make sure obviously that you are, uh, are optimizing for both, but just a little fun fact about, about actual purchasing habits. Okay. So Let's get back into it. All right. So uh, something else not to worry too much about is Internet Explorer. Now, I know that this is the browser that a lot of us learned, uh, you know, the Internet on in general. And so we're like really loyal to it. But I have to tell you, most people now are using Chrome and Safari. So you want to focus on those. If you want to look up the usage share of browsers across the internet, 
Chrome and Safari beat out every other one. I mean, Chrome far surpasses it all, but a lot of people use Safari specifically because most people have, um, most mobile users are iPhones. So, um, and then also Edge and Firefox and Samsung internet coming in next. Opera as well, and then Internet Explorer is very low, 0.62%. So, um, you know, if you are obsessing because like your fonts or something like that can't be seen on Internet Explorer, know that that is really common um, and know that you shouldn't worry that much about it. I would say the only, you know, my only disclaimer there would be, let's say you have a, an older audience. So let's say you're specifically serving people that are in their 70s um, that maybe have older computers or using older browsers, older software, um, then obviously, you know, pay special attention to that. Okay. Uh, next is what to get right. So something that you want to make sure that you're getting right is anything with a lot of vertical space. So your headers, guys, you don't want to be super big. You want those to be, um, as thin as, as possible. I mean, obviously you don't want it to be so thin that like, you know, it doesn't make sense. People can't see them, but you want, you don't want it to take up half of a mobile screen or something like that. Um, banners, you want to make those less tall. You want to avoid large fixed headers. Fixed means that it doesn't, uh, move with the page. So like it sticks to the top of the experience. You want to avoid big ones of those because it's really hard for people on their phone to see what's going on. Um, you also don't want to use as many images on mobile. You don't actually need as many images on mobile to make your point. You can hide some larger images and make the text the main thing. And I'm going to actually show you um, in, a, in just a couple minutes here a demo of, of how you can optimize your mobile experience. Um, actually just kidding. I'm going to show you right now. Okay. So this is a website that, you know, my team recently built for a client. Um, she's a super, super dynamic, awesome, you know, teacher online. Um, and she has this beautiful website now, but she has this big banner up top. And so, and then she also has this, um, this header, which isn't fixed, but it easily could be. So when we were mobile optimizing for her, we realized that this banner doesn't really look that great on mobile. And just to show you kind of a test here, if I hit that R key twice, um, you know, now it shows this new banner that we actually made for her. Um, but out of the box, this banner stretched across the screen and, you know, you couldn't really to make your put like it showed like a little bit of her shoulder and then this text and it felt a little bit random um so what we wound up doing is we actually have two versions of her header so we have this version which is for mobile which looks crazy on a desktop screen um but then as you can see when I hit the R key, which is how we can test our, uh, in, in the builder responsive editing, um, we have, it, it looks great as a mobile experience and it all fits in one screen view. So kind of the same principle of above the fold, um, you know, it, it's really just on one screen. It looks really good. Now, the way that you can make separate banners for mobile and for desktop is if you go here to the little row settings feature and then you go over to advanced, you'll see where it says breakpoint. There's a, an option that says small devices only. So if you make a, an experience for small devices only, then hit save. And then you made another experience, so like our main one, um, we just set that up so that it doesn't, you know, we don't have two things, two banners on mobile as large and medium devices only hit save. Then, you know, when I hit that R key, when I get that experience, I'm only going to see the one that is made for mobile. Now, the reason that they both appear on desktop view is because desktop is the default builder view. So you should actually see even things that you're technically hidden. You're still going to see them in the builder. But if we hit done and publish, we're actually going to see only one experience on desktop when we're actually, you know, not inside of build mode. Okay. So if you see both, don't freak out. It's supposed to be like that. So let's talk about how to test everything to begin with. So when you're building your site, uh, you just saw me do it. You're going to click either the mobile icon. So next to the, in, in all of your settings, there's a little, um, there's a little, uh, you know, mobile icon, or you can hit that R key, just like literally R, um, to view it in responsive mode. 
to test this experience in your browser, after you save, you can open this in Chrome. That's the one that I, I, uh, I recommend. You can also right click, I mean, sorry, and then you right click and select inspect, select the mobile icon, and then select the top, uh, from the top, what device you wanna preview it on. So just to kind of show you, when you right click in Chrome and you hit inspect, here is the little icon that'll show you mobile uh, mobile devices. So you just click on that. And then there's a drop down up here. So this will show me a preview on an iPhone X device. But if I click on it, um, it would show me, you know, iPad, all the other, um, the other mobile browsers. So I could preview everything in it. Okay. And then my last pro tip is always actually check this on your phone. So open the website on your phone and make sure that it looks the same as, as it did in the preview. Sometimes it actually looks a little bit different. Sometimes the preview looks perfect and then you actually preview it on your phone and it's a little different. So you might want to just double check. Um, and then if you want more guidance, we do have a tutorial. If you go to mignotwebsite.com slash tutorial dash library, there is a do a mobile sweep button. Um, this is also linked in your uh, dashboard. So there's that that quick quick start guide to um, to creating a website. If you you click on the the mobile um, sweep icon, uh, you'll see how to do that. Okay, so we have a question. Thank you. Great. It says a uh, great info. Thank you. If you're taking off topic questions. Okay, so this is an off topic question, um, which I totally will answer. But I wanted to, um, to just make sure that everyone feels really clear on mobile. So, um, so I just wanted to say, where's my camera here? Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below this video and we can definitely keep adding to this, um, this comment thread with any of your mobile questions, um, mobile specific tutorials. We really, really want to make sure that you feel empowered when it comes to the mobile experience of your website. Okay. So I just wanted to say that before I jump into this off topic question. Okay. So we are done with the mobile tutorial section of this video, unless we get any questions specific to that. I'm going to go ahead and um, and answer this off-topic question now. Um, so let me add this. Let me actually add it to the broadcast. Um, it says, um, I created a registration page for folks to get access to a members-only section of my website. Is there a way to disallow random people from creating logins without a purchase? They will purchase a subscription in Shopify and then get an email via Drip to go to the registration page to create their login. Thanks in advance. Okay. So what it's, it sounds like you have, you know, kind of like people that you have a page that you created where there, anyone can register technically, but it, it sounds like you have a, you have a, a, almost like a membership that you're selling a subscription to, but it's not really connected to your membership specifically. Um, you know, I would say if you're doing it that way, you might actually want to, instead of making it so that they're disconnected like that, you might actually want to see if there's a way that you can use Zapier to add people to your website, um, to add people to the registration on your website. Actually, off the top of my head, don't know if you can or not. I wish I did, um, cause that would be cool. But if there is a way, um, let me know. And, and you know what, actually, if you wanted to just pop that into our support team, I don't know if you already have or not, but, um, but I would love to take a look. I would need to get access to, um, your Shopify account and, um, and I already have access to your website if you're on Weeknet website already. Um, another thing that I would recommend is you might even want to look at a third party, membership specific plugin like like a member space it's not really a plugin like a wordpress plugin it's more like a third party membership specific like paywall um and that will help a lot as well because you know if you just have a registration page out there without password protecting it or something it's true that anyone could find it so there's really no way without having some sort of paywall that's actually connected to that page to 
limit people, limit just anyone from signing up, which is what it sounds like you want to do. So yeah, definitely, um, you know, email support and we can see if, if there's like a way to do it through Zapier. Um, however, I will say the paid version of Zapier is $25 a month. And for that price, you might as well just do it through member space and, and, you know, make your life a little bit easier. So, all right, well, I will, let's see, I'm going to check if there's any more questions, but I don't think there are. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you joining me and please let us know if there's anything else that you would like to know about in future monthly highlights. We'll talk to you soon.